So we're talking a little bit about your own journey and uh, talking about you you are different to what you were before. Mm -hmm. You'll never forget what you were, but you right. won't indulge in that lifestyle now. Right, and, and I think because I, I, it's not too conform to a set of rules. You know, God makes us these sexual creatures and then he puts these prescriptions around it. But that's because understanding the human condition that uh, while we have the capacity to be creative and glorious, we have the capacity to do terribly dark things that hurt us and other people. And like a father, you know, being a father myself, I well understand that when God puts prescriptions around our sexuality it's not to be some arbitrary control freak uh, bound by rules it's because he wants that we not hurt ourselves and other people and of course the great news is God throughout the Bible has a great history established of saving us from our sins including our sexual sins and there are seven brilliant illustrations in the Bible of sexual redemption um, where God takes people who did not know him and who were involved in sexual lifestyles where he rescues them uh, or people who even walked with God who then where their sexuality got the better of them for whatever reason. And uh, it became controlling in their lives and how God did not abandon them but rescued them. And I think, you know, when people say, what's the most important thing you've learned in your journey? I'd say, run to God, not from him. That he's my best advocate, understands me. And uh, uh, he, he's a God who has a history of redeeming these concerns. But unfortunately, church culture hasn't always conveyed that effectively. And much of church culture that, that we know in our, our modern society still carries with it the echo of the Puritan ethic, which might have been a very high standard of moral relational responsibility, but it got kind of cut loose from the moorings of why these mm -hmm. prescriptions were put in place. And of course, God's reasons why are to be loving and protective of us. But a lot of culture, especially church culture, has been bound by rules. And this doesn't rescue us, you know. Um, but I will say, I, and I must say of Australian church culture, while there are always going to be exceptions to what I'm going to say, um, much of Australian church culture is wonderfully pragmatic, straightforward, and like the society itself, much more direct and willing to discuss these things. Um, and that's why I've been traveling here for all these years. Or, there, you know, I wouldn't be coming here if I weren't invited to right. come and make this contribution to church culture. And especially the current tier of leadership, younger, more conversant with life experience, more conversational and tuned in to cultural direction and what's going on and not afraid to address it. Why do we have sexual struggles? Why do people who love God still persist in having sexual problems? What does not work? And what does? Again, I don't think I know everything, but I've had to find answers to those questions in my own care of others, let alone for my own spiritual survival. And so the insights I've learned uh, will be sharing in seminar at Northside. And, uh, you know, thank God, again, church culture is willing to wrestle this thing and learn to do better in representing God's face to culture. Come to God like you are. Bring your humanity. So... We'll take you, we'll love you, and then God will take you further. And it may not happen with the magic wand overnight. But, you know, as a dad, I understand this adage I'm going to offer you right now. I'd rather have a kid who's messy than no child at all. And if you're listening right now and you think, you know, that your humanity robs you of God, that it, it's a wall between you and God, it takes you from God, I would encourage you to change direction and bring your problems to God. Um, you know, how do you do that? Well, certainly talking to God. Certainly reading his word and finding out he's got a history like this, that he deals with issues like this. And he does it generously, mercifully, graciously. He doesn't say, here's a standard, now you'd better live up to it and make me happy. Instead, he's more like, um, I will be your best cheerleader. I will be your advocate. I'd never set up a standard you cannot achieve. But at the same time, sometimes running to God means running to God with skin on. You know, I'm so thankful that I had the support of a caring church family. I went to an inner city church. They were used to the human condition in that environment, and they were not put off by my background. And they just loved me and held me accountable and helped me walk on that path that I sometimes wondered if I could make it. They believed in me. Mm -hmm. Kind of like God dressing himself up in their skin. That in a tangible, touchable way, I could be affirmed. And I thought, you know, if these people can take it and love me then maybe the God behind them is like that too. Mm. So I began to realize I had a lot of misconceptions about Christian people, the faith of Christianity, and about God. I thought I knew it all until I knew and learned better. And um, I just want to encourage you, if you're listening and you think, gosh, I, I'm, you know, I don't struggle with what you did, Cy, but I struggle with my dirty thoughts. I struggle with my Internet porn. I struggle with attractions that discourage me and that I don't know how to get a handle on and conquer. Um, I wrestle with the past that haunts me or present problems that trip me up and demoralize me. If that's you, not only would I say welcome to the human race and every other believer in the family of faith, but 
I would encourage you to remember there is a God who knows how to deal with all this. And why we've lost that in some ways in church culture is sad, but when you do your research into the scriptures, you see, again, it's not new cutting-edge ministry to God. He knows how to address these concerns. But maybe it might be helpful that you talk with someone. You know, maybe the fallout of sharing with a spouse, maybe your spouse isn't mature enough to cope. Maybe other church people wouldn't know what to say. They're not trained therapists. Uh, Maybe your pastor isn't one either. Maybe it's too close to the bone to open up in your Sunday school or cell group. But maybe you can find a professional bound by a code of ethics to make it a secret, but at the same time to share insight to help you find a better way forward. Or maybe you can belong to a support group. That's the power of support groups that have proliferated around the world, you know, whether it's AA or Shopaholics Anonymous or Sexaholics Anonymous. There are support group meetings where people can go and take off the mask that maybe appropriately and protectively they wear elsewhere, but they can finally relax, take off the mask and say, it's true, I have this weakness, I share that with you, but at the same time, I share this goal where weakness will not be my master, and we can share that journey together. Mm -hmm. That's why I think they've spread around the world. Um, Are, Are there ministries available here in Adelaide?